And welcome back to the show, everyone. My name is Brian Elam. I will be your host on this episode of Get Your Entrepreneurship Together. And today, we're going to go into physicality. But not just physicality. We're going to visit the mindset of physicality and what being in shape, having proper nutrition, what that can all do for you. Because we all know that success as an entrepreneur begins on the inside. And there's nothing better, in my opinion, that you can do for the inside is fuel your body correctly and make sure that you are exercising and staying in shape. So with that being said, we have Roman Fisher here. He is a fitness coach and obviously in great shape himself. So we're going to dive into what it takes to do this, the mindset that it takes to do it. We're going to hear more of his story. And so we're just going to dive right in. Roman, thank you so much for coming on, man. It's a pleasure having you here. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. So with what you sent over to me, uh, I got a little bit of your background. And even before we hit the record button, we were talking about your trip to Japan and you got to oh, see yeah. you got to see the Nintendo factory and the origins of Nintendo. And, you know, I as a kid was a big Nintendo geek. You know, you can find me. <laughs> You could find me playing that thing. You know, if if my mom didn't kick me off to go to school, I probably would have stayed there all day. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I I was the same way growing up as a kid. I I was so so you know into and addicted to the uh, you know GameCube, the GameCube, Super Nintendo, and then the Wii. And I even got a little bit into the N sixty four. I even got a little bit into the N sixty four. I'll be honest, that was so fun. Oh, got it. yeah, the nostalgia yeah. is there. Sure. Oh, that's hundred percent nostalgia. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's cool that we we both you know had that connection right off the bat, and you know again with what you sent over to me, a little bit of your story that I want to dive deeper into. You said it was your younger brother that got yeah. you into fitness and becoming aware, more aware of your body and what you wanted it to be. So, yeah. what was it about your brother that you noticed that made you think? I need to do this too. Was it, was it his, his mindset? Was it his physicality? What was it that made you take notice? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. That's a great question, man. I would honestly have to say this. So it was a combination. It was really a combination of both. Uh, so seeing it was first though, I will say initially it was first his energy, his energy change, his energy shift, if you will. So seeing from where he was, where he was to start, not feeling as energetic, not feeling as confident, even just feeling more weighed down, sluggish, and not as confident, not as, you know, happy with his body, with how he felt. Uh, honestly, just seeing that even some depression, anxiety with it too, and Going from that where he was, being in that, you know, predicament, being in that mindset and emotional state, honestly, being from there and starting at that point to working out and not completely overnight, but almost overnight, seeing the results with his mindset, with those endorphins that just kicked in that really hit, you know, his emotional state in a good way and transformed how he felt, how he, you know, was thinking about himself, about other people and just his whole life. It just really changed in that regard automatically, almost overnight. It was so crazy because a lot of people think that, you know, when they get into fitness, that there's no overnight results. They either expect there to be overnight results or they don't expect there to be. And usually that is the case that there is not overnight results, but, but that's more of the physical aspect. The emotional, the mental aspect of things can change almost, if not overnight, close to overnight. So seeing those changes on his mindset, in his mindset rather, that really inspired me a lot. And that alone was enough of a reason to, you know, give me that inspiration, give me that ultimate encouragement that I was lacking to finally step into fitness for myself and for my overall health. And then also it is worth noting over the course of a month, especially two months down the road, I started seeing those physical, you know, changes, those physical uh, improvements on his body. His physique was definitely gaining more strength. He was catching that traction with gaining more of that muscle mass, that lean muscle mass, that definition that he didn't have as much before. And so seeing that and picking up on that, 
you know, even more than he did, because it is crazy when you work out, you can see results yourself, but not as easily and quickly as other people will notice them. hundred percent. And so seeing that for him, especially as his older brother, that really, really encouraged me. It's like, okay, all right. Not to say you shouldn't make progress. You should, but if you can make progress, I'm thinking internally, I can too. I got, you know, I got to, I got to, can't let them, can't let them just outlift me here. I got to also make my, you know, progress as well. So just a little friendly, you know, brotherly competition there, but also just the encouragement anyway, to just better my health, better my physique, better my overall body and overall health. And honestly, the mindset part though, and portion was enough, was enough of a reason to want to take that step into fitness anyway. And just thinking better, having more clarity, me more mental focus, more mental clarity is honestly paramount. It, that is like the most important thing. That is the most important thing anybody could and really should ever have anyway, even more than physical. But then when you can add in the physical benefits to exercise, all that really pushed me into fitness. And then I finally got into it. I felt better, just like he was experiencing. I was experiencing very, very similar you know, results and benefits. And then from there, my confidence started going up. And then I started seeing myself in the mirror with more definition in all the right places with my biceps, my chest and all those things. I'm like, man, this is good. This is good. I don't think I can quit this. <laughs> this yeah. is a healthy addiction, if you will. So that really, that was awesome. That was very, you know, very inspiring. And honestly, it's what has helped keep me consistent, just seeing those changes and those progress, you know, picks and those uh, measurements of progress, all that is very inspiring just for your own self. And I've noticed ever since I felt better, I've been looking better. I haven't looked back since, honestly, it's been a really overall pretty seamless journey. Granted, there's days where I'll be a little bit, of, you know, more tired or little less motivated, but for the most part, remembering, I like, I love to say this, rem uh, remembering my why, remembering my why is, uh, is key, is key for getting that motivation and keeping, keeping that motivation, keeping that consistency to actually keep leveling up and keep improving and keep progressing. And that is exactly where I wanted to kind of start going with you. But first, I want to ask you, when you started seeing that transformation in your brother, um, how old were you at the time? Yeah. So when this all happened, I was only uh, 15. I was only about 15, almost 16. So about 15, 15 and a half. And I was starting to see the results he was making, uh, you know, at such a younger age, because he was he's about two years younger than me. So he was just barely a teenager, basically. So seeing him finally step into being a teen and actually take care of his body, something that I didn't care to really do much other than play soccer occasionally. That's about all I did, which, you know, has its own health benefits to it, more cardiovascular and some lower body, of course. But even still, I didn't care too much about my health. I mean, I just played soccer for fun, not so much for the health uh, portion or aspect of it. Right. But seeing him be more intentional with his health and actually pick up the weights, do the strength training that can benefit how he looked and seeing those results, seeing those transitions really, really was just incredible. It was incredible for sure to see. And so let me ask you, you were, you were 15, almost 16, um, basically coming into your own as far as a young adult. Um, yeah all the, all the hormones flooding through the body and all of this. Right. So let me ask you, what was your mental state at the time before, uh, you started picking up the weights and getting into it? Yeah, hundred percent. So before I got into fitness and started working out, started actually taking care and being more, you know, just hyper aware of my body and my health, my physical health, I was more, I was more along the lines of what my brother was, you know, I was more depressed. I was more uh, self-conscious. I wasn't self-confident. I was more self-conscious and I just felt very yeah, depressed, low, uh, very low in energy, lethargic, if you will, even to an extent, I didn't feel like I really wanted to do much other than barely, you know, get myself dragged to school <laughs> and come back home and do the basic, uh, basic stuff most kids will do, but still, I just didn't have any motivation hardly beyond just playing some video games, maybe, 
maybe going to play some soccer and enjoy myself on a soccer game if I had a game that I was doing. But beyond that, I just didn't really have much, you know, inspiration. I didn't have much care or any desire for fitness, for health. And I was definitely more lacking confidence, just more self-satisfaction and overall, you know, self-gratification. And there's another word for it that I'm trying to think of, but oh yeah, self-actualization. Of course, I always like to believe there's another way or another step that you can uh, achieve that. There's always another level you can get to. So there's never really the perfect level to be in your life. In my opinion, there's always levels we can level up on. But Agreed. still, even while that is true, of course, we can always learn. We can always live and grow. I still was not even close to where that could be, so to speak. Mm. So I was always yeah, just weighed down. I didn't feel like I was progressing or getting anywhere. And I just lived with it, not even really thinking too much of it. That's what's crazy. And now that I look back on it, just like right now, even I'm like, I don't even know how I did that back then. Just not caring about what I was eating, what I was drinking, what I was doing with my body. It's like, I don't, I don't know how I live with myself. You know, I just don't know. <laughs> That's crazy though. But uh, well, yeah, I was definitely more weighed down for sure. And I mean, uh, it goes, so energetic. it goes back to, um, a saying that one of my guests said, and I, I, this will always stick in my brain. It says, she said that we are all here to activate someone else. And your brother, yeah. obviously in that instance was there to activate you. So let's go down a little bit farther into your journey. You know, you're 16, you're 17, 18, going through high school. What happens in your life after high school? Where do we go? Yeah, after after my high school career. So if you want to call it a career. <laughs> so after <laughs> it kind after, of felt like a nine to five, I'll tell you it that. did. <laughs> it really did. It 100 percent did without a doubt. But uh, after my after high school, after I finally got out of there and graduated for good, uh, you know, I was super happy about that. I will say I took some time away just to kind of uh, reflect on things, but also from there, not just reflect on things from my past, but to look forward and see what I, what I was really, really wanting in life. I did know to an extent what I was, what I was wanting, because I was already getting more into fitness at that point, having already been inspired to work out. So I will say I wasn't fully at my, you know, mindset of helping people out yet in fitness at that level. I was more so just being more consistent with my workouts, working on myself with my health. I wasn't quite there yet in the timeline yet of my life of where I was going to help people out with their health and with their fitness goals and their overall fitness needs. But I was taking care of myself. I was starting to get more consistent then with my workouts. I then also was starting to think more about obviously career, making money, things like that. So did some basic nine to fives. Didn't always love the job, but hey, I just did it to try to get myself through to make some extra money, whether it was serving or maybe it was honestly just being a cashier somewhere. So doing different types of jobs that I could at least tolerate and you know get through from day to day. And then after that, I started to take more of an interest about 17 and then of course up to 18 and on. I've had this huge interest in the uh, entertainment industry with acting, with modeling, I've noticed, especially lately, uh, fitness modeling and film acting and even voiceovers to an extent. So that was my passion. Of course, I wasn't doing it full time overnight, but starting to book some gigs through a local agency that I've had here in Arkansas. And then also eventually by about 19, uh, especially in my early 20s, I started to get uh, this agency and some offers in other states. So I got this agency in Atlanta. And then eventually, a few years down the road, a few agencies in Florida even. So that's been really neat. I've been with them ever since. They've got me some cool gigs. I actually got an audition later today, which I'll be crushing. So that's awesome as well. But essentially, after high school, I started getting more to really get back to that, more into acting, more into modeling and doing that with my day job. And then, of course, my workouts. That was basically my life after high school for at least a good few years. And then after that, I started to get so much more focused on fitness and helping people that I didn't give up, obviously, on my own workouts because I you got to look the part. You got to take care of your health anyway. But I started to phase out of the nine to fives more 
as I started to get more acting and modeling gigs, but also thinking about, you know, who I was beyond just a model, beyond just an actor, who I was as a person, like inside internally. Right. And outside of the entertainment industry, the entertainment field, which I knew I liked and loved and enjoyed, I also knew deep down inside, you know, at heart, I was a very much a humanitarian, very much a humanitarian by nature at heart. And so knowing that, and then knowing that I already had this love for fitness, this love of fitness, I then just effortlessly combined my passion and love for fitness with my already human instinct of being a humanitarian. And honestly, I just coupled them together, combined those two together. And I was like, well, I guess if you add that plus that, that equals fitness coaching, you know, high performance coaching, training, just helping people with their fitness, essentially. And so when I got to that level, got to that point in my life, I realized this is this is something I want. And then fast forward all the way to 2020, funny enough, SmackDown right <laughs> during quarantine, I actually decided to, other than just work out and help my own health, I wanted to help other people do the same thing. I wanted to help other people do the same exact thing for their own health for their own life and for their own just overall wellness. And so as I learned, not just more about the importance of being healthy, longevity, so many other variables and factors in that as well. And then seeing a lot of the people I knew and loved, which hate to say and sad to say, but passed away due to poor health, not really prioritizing their health, their needs with their internal body, what they're putting in their body, not treating it really like a temple, like it truly is and honestly neglecting their body and i always love to go back to this uh, saying that i forget who actually coined the phrase but it's a great powerful phrase and i'll paraphrase it but you live with your body every day so take care of it so whatever you're putting in your body whatever you're drinking eating all that stuff make sure it's good make sure it's clean healthy uh, nutrition because you live with your body every day you live with yourself every day, so you've got to take care of it from the inside out. And so seeing my, you know, a lot of the the family members and friends I knew not take that advice, not really pay any mind or attention to that. And then I hate to say, but suffered the consequences, very much negative consequences and seeing their health deteriorate, that really made it hard for me to, at first, want to keep going in my health because that actually unmotivated me. but. I will say a few weeks down the road, it actually, I used that pain for fuel and I let it fuel me and used it for a fire to actually transform and level up my health and keep mm. staying consistent. That way I could start living the way that they could have lived. And I wanted to make them happy as if they were here with me right now. I wanted to leave a healthy legacy for everyone that was alive with me, for myself, and for the people that did not quite make it with their health. But I wanted to make them happy from afar so that way they could see what could have been and what is possible for me, for other people, and for everyone else that is still, you know, with us. Yeah. And so that that really did, by the end of the day, fuel me. And honestly, it pushed me into the realm of finally helping other people. So again, fast forward to 2020, during uh, during COVID, Crazy time to start, I will say, but at the same time, it really, it was actually a perfect time to start because during, uh, you know, COVID, a lot of businesses obviously shut down. A lot of, you know, companies shut down or at least seized, uh, you know, any and all uh, work for a while. And so during that time, during that time frame in that, you know, um, area of time, I actually use that to my advantage though, because I, I launched my fitness coaching business online. So, you know, in person, it would have been a disaster of an idea, right. but I actually launched it for sure. It would have been. So imagine opening a gym and smack down during quarantine. I don't, yeah, that, I don't that's think not that a good business been, move. <laughs> no, that would have been the worst, worst thing anybody could ever do for sure. But doing it all online though, I was like, all right, so I want to help people. I already love fitness and I already love helping people. So combining that, I can do fitness training. But I don't want to do it in person, especially with everything going on. And I already am good at, you know, 
marketing myself online. So I may as well just do this all virtually. And then I had this uh, mentor, this business mentor reach out to me and, and help me get started on the process the flow of things and really how the business model could start and be set up. Eventually I went with a, another business coach who helped me, I would say exponentially a lot more, but bottom line is I actually got into fitness during quarantine online. And honestly, that was the best move I've ever made. Best move I've ever made because it uh, wasn't affected by quarantine. It wasn't affected by COVID. It was actually, if anything, positively impacted by COVID because oh, yeah. a lot of people were trying to do online courses, online training, workouts from home. So a hundred percent. I mean, did you, did you pay attention at all to what the stock of Peloton did during COVID? Everybody was, yeah. everybody it's was crazy. ordering that stuff. It just shot to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, That's you it. got in that at the absolute perfect time. And I, you know, I can't tell you how many other entrepreneurs I've talked to that COVID was the shift for them, yeah. either oh, with yeah. the direction of their business or the fact that they were starting a business. So many people obviously were negatively impacted by COVID, um, but so many more were positively impacted. And, you know, you oh, made yeah. the, you made the, the, the point of, you know, some family members, friends that you had seen that they didn't take care of themselves. And unfortunately they had, you know, they had passed and, you know, my condolences to you for those losses sincerely. Um, yeah, cause I know, I, appreciate it. I, I know it hurt. I know we've all lost family members. You know, I'm old enough now that, uh, grandparents have, have gone. And so I totally, I feel for you and, um, talking about COVID Joe Rogan was all about this health fitness, taking care of your body during that time. And he caught, yeah. he caught a lot of flack for it. Um, is it your opinion or do you agree with him that had <clears throat> had people been taking more care of themselves nutrition wise exercise wise all of this that we would have had more people survive covid than what did yeah hey that's a that's a really good question so i'll be i'll be honest with you 100% uh, real here it it does you know make or break you know how immune you can or can't be with covid i will say you know, I mean, I caught COVID and I was still healthy. So I'm not going to say that being fit, being healthy, taking care of your body is going to just make it impossible to catch COVID because it's obviously possible. I'm living proof that as someone that did catch COVID and I'm super consistent, super healthy and clean with my nutrition. Heck, I barely have a cheat meal, in fact. <laughs> but I will say, while that's all true in all the case, uh, you still should uh, prioritize your health because it is true though that while it doesn't completely take away that risk it still can make it a lot harder to catch covid when you are healthy you're eating the right foods you're not you know overweight and you're just super fit you're super uh you know uh, consistent with the routine of nutrition of fitness you're getting your sleep all those things will combat the likelihood of getting covid though that is 100% true as far as that goes. But but don't think that you shouldn't, you know, take care of the basics like washing your hands, staying away from people that are sick that have whether it's the flu, the cold or covid, which has a lot of negative effects. Just staying away from those those illnesses, those uh, diseases are also important to you no matter how unhealthy or healthy you are. Yeah. Very true. Very good point. And so I'm glad that we're thinking along the same lines there. And yeah. you mentioned that you had a business mentor that reached out to you and helped you along the first, you know, first iterations of your business, which is amazing. We all need mentors if we want to succeed in this life and especially in business. What I was wondering is, did you go get any kind of other trainings or certifications within the fitness or nutrition world to kind of add on to what you had uh, organically brought into your life. Yeah, man. Uh, so yeah, I actually got uh, during the shortly before COVID, actually, before I decided to go online, I actually got NASM certified. So through NASM, one of the more popular, if not the most popular, you know, uh, certifications that any personal trainer can get, whether they're trying to just train online and person or both. 
And so that's something I actually got because my first intent was to work at a gym, you know, alongside doing some acting and modeling jobs. I was wanting to help people out in person because I was like, well, it's personable. <laughs> no pun intended. It literally you're right there. You're able to help the client, you know, with any needs or any goals they have. But COVID came and it just took away all that anyway. And then I also realized, you know, may as well just do this online. That's how most things are going, especially during this time, now more than ever. But also the the potential, the business potential, income and otherwise is limitless online. You know, you literally keep all your profits and you're not having a gym take any cut. You're It's just you, the client, and whatever price you agree on for their goals, depending on what they need. Of course, that will vary the price, but knowing that, keeping that in mind and knowing that there's no limit on your income as far as that's, you know, concerned. That's, it's just amazing. And yep. it's honestly, it COVID, I'm not saying it's good. Obviously it wasn't, but in that regard, what I do believe in life in general, bad or good things come out of bad things. And that was 100%. one instance where a really, really solid, great, good thing came out of a really, really bad thing. So I will say that to you. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously this being a show about entrepreneurship, I want to dive in just a little bit to your business model. So yeah. you mentioned that <clears throat> online is where you really got your start. The opportunities are limitless. And my brain starts going when you say limitless. So what what does your business model look like? Do you have a a standard membership that you that you update videos on or do you have within that do you have segments like people that are wanting to focus on let's say um coming from like morbidly obese to back to regular yeah. size or getting ripped or uh you know increasing flexibility like do you have those segments or those buckets within your business model Yes, uh, to an extent, I do uh, more of the latter than anything. So how I typically do it, depending on the person, the client, the individual, and their overall fitness needs at the moment, I'll focus mainly on that. And it's usually, I will say, at least three to four months, depending on their goals, however many pounds they're trying to gain a muscle, or however many pounds of weight and fat they're trying to lose, I always base it around at least three to four months, 12 weeks, or a 16-week program. And it usually targets, uh, fully targets their fitness goal and fully customized to that. Okay. And then based on that, uh, usually three to four months down the road, the, uh, the, the layout, the whole layout and their whole program will change depending on their goals and whatever goals they, you know, have that might be new or maybe different. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're essentially working with these people one-on-one -on -one just remotely. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. And what is your, what is your capacity to do that? I mean, you're, you're, you're one guy, you know, with, and we all have so many hours in the day, right? So what, what is your like client list top out at when you, when you start filling these programs? Yeah, definitely. So what I've done, luckily I've just always been pretty good at not just overall consistency and dedication and hard work, but also just really good with time management and allocating my time, you know, effectively on certain tasks and certain people. So it just depends on uh, certain clients I'll work with. I'll do usually one call a week. Some might be two a week if they're really needing that help, that extra bit of accountability compared to the other clients. And some clients don't really need any coaching calls, which I usually do about an hour a week through Zoom through my uh, with my clients one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. So it's really powerful, really, really effective for giving them that you know, accountability, that coaching that they really need. So some people need two, some people need one, some people don't really need, uh, you know, any of them. Some people just really uh, follow the blueprint. They're really uh, consistent with their goals. They can get the workouts and their meals in, and that usually works out pretty well. So it depends on the client and that can actually help make it a little easier, if you will, for the workload that I might have in that week uh, and for the several weeks ahead for that month. So that's one way also uh, having, you know, a mentor guide me sometimes too on how to manage certain things. If I'm struggling ever with any, uh, you know, time management by having a lot of clients to deal with. 
that also helps tremendously too. And then honestly, I'm looking at it not yet, but probably pretty soon to get an appointment setter because that can also be very, very effective to you to manage your time um, even more. Because even if you have great uh, time management skills, if you have a lot of you know people, a lot of clients and a lot of tasks at the moment right in front of you, uh, staring you in the face, you got to make sure to sometimes, uh, you know, delegate. So delegate, you got to delegate, have, you know, an appointment center to help you uh, just delegate properly then. And yeah. that way it makes a workload more efficient, more productive, and not so not so stressful for anyone. And it's a win win across the board. Absolutely. You, you have to know when to start outsourcing there there yes. you're right there's a certain point where it becomes over capacity for you and it's better to like you said get an appointment setter um get somebody to run your social media you know whatever that looks like for for your business in particular and you mentioned you mentioned time management and this is something that i wanted to touch on in relationship to fitness for an entrepreneur because you as an entrepreneur you know you're busy you got a lot of stuff yes. going on right so how do you recommend starting the process of achieving the fitness goals for an entrepreneur who is super busy and I have no time? Yes, yes. That, that common phrase, that common saying that a lot of people throw around, even people that aren't entrepreneurs, which is even crazier yet because there's I met some people that are not entrepreneurs and are super uh, super busy, but really not always the busiest people. And they'll make those you know excuses. But of course, when it comes down to uh, just not having time, I found, especially if you're a high performing, you know, entrepreneur and you're just trying to get to your business, you're trying to achieve that income goal, you're trying to do this with your business and your industry that you're in, whatever industry it is. I found the best way to honestly have time for fitness isn't worrying about the gym just to start with. I know that sounds crazy. I'm not saying don't work out. I'm saying don't worry about the gym if you're super you know hectic with your uh, schedule already i recommend honestly just taking it easy and working out from home taking it easy on yourself just work out from home don't stress about the commute because that commute that commute literally will add time to your day and most people don't think about that they think about the time in the gym but yep. you also just as much got to think about the time to and from the gym especially if you live what 10 20 30 minutes plus some people live way out in the middle of nowhere. So that can also be a factor, but working out from your home will save you and free you up all that time, you know, automatically. So that alone is going to help you a lot. And then not just to work out from home, but if you have dumbbells, use that. If you just want to use resistance bands or calisthenics, so basically your body weight when you're exercising, I would also recommend that that can also be very, very, uh, you know, efficient, but also very cost effective. You don't have to worry about spending money on equipment then. And you can also save yourself a lot of time just being at home, doing calisthenics, keeping it simple, not overcomplicating your workouts or the process of that. And you could literally do this three days a week, uh, 10 to 15 minute full body circuits. That way you're working out your full body, your whole entire body from top to bottom, literally just using your body weight to your advantage and literally get all part of uh, all parts of your body all muscles in your body worked uh you know effectively and efficiently so that way you can see the results that you've been wanting to see and you don't have to spend time at the gym you can do this from home and literally do this in 10 to 15 minutes uh just doing a circuit and so when i say that because some people do some people don't know what circuits are but if you're doing a full body circuit or a circuit in general, that's usually doing at least five different exercises all together in one with no rest in between, and then taking about 90 seconds, maybe two minutes at the end of that exercise to just rest for a bit. Then go back at it for at least two to three more rounds and do a total of at least three, maybe four rounds tops. And having just five exercises for your full body, so maybe a chest, a back, a shoulder, and then perhaps a leg workout, and then a certain uh, ab workout, like sit-ups. Doing all that together and just those five exercises and having a 90-second to a two-minute rest period at the end 
doing that three days a week only from home literally will save you so much time, so much energy, and you can still burn a lot of calories and get closer to your goal, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Even if you're trying to gain muscle, you're still going to gain some strength and muscle by really challenging and targeting those areas of your body and really doing that circuit to help build strength and muscle while also burning quite a bit of calories. Oh yeah. Body weight exercise is yes. an amazing way to, to get lean for sure oh, yeah. and add strength. I, I just, I got knocked down with what I believe was COVID for the second time uh, oh, wow. a few weeks ago. And I was down for a week and then came back and, you know, started getting back into exercising, working out again. And dude, I was on the floor getting ready to do a push up, and my arms were shaking. And I'm like, oh, what wow. is yeah. happening right now? I normally, I don't shake when I do push ups. Like, oh, right. you know, yeah, I had, That's I had to start cool. over. But yeah, you know, now I'm up to the point where I can do, you know, 20 at a time and then we can take a short break and I do circuit training. So I totally get what you're saying. Nice. nice. And um, see if you agree with me on this point. Once somebody does start integrating that, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, three times a week into their life and they start seeing the physical changes, feeling the emotional changes, I bet you more time starts to free up on their schedule where they devote more to it. What, what do you yes. think? <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. I actually, it's crazy because I'm just speaking now out of just pure personal experience. Way back then when I was starting to get into fitness and when I first did my first circuit, you know, all body weight, all calisthenic based, and I was trying to free up my, you know, time and my week of not working out as much as I used to. And I was just trying to, you know, give myself a break, maybe just work out a few times a week, see how it goes. I did that. Then I started to, you know, yearn or actually desire more days at, you know, either home to work out or maybe even go to the gym. I started getting that, that, you know, desire and that, um, that intensity inside my, my mindset to want to go, you know, harder with my workouts. So it's crazy how that works because when we try to free yourself time, of workouts and exercise and we try to free ourselves time of that we actually want more time of that <laughs> it's crazy how that works we try to free ourselves time from that but we actually want more of that because we start getting addicted to the process right the endorphins that come out of that it's it's crazy it right is. and all of a sudden you see that what you were telling yourself you were so busy and had like no time you can start to see oh that that was uh I was BSing myself there. I've got a lot more time than what I thought I had. <laughs> Seriously, it's it's insane. It really, it really is. It's 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 absolutely nuts. It's nuts how that works. Yep, absolutely. And, and thinking about you know BSing ourselves, I wanted to ask you, like, what is your favorite fitness myth to debunk? Oh, this is a good one. My favorite fitness myth to debunk i would have to say because there's so many out there so many so many out there it's hard to even wrap your head around how there could be so many but i would have to say without a doubt my favorite one that i could actually oh debunk okay this is perfect it just came to me carbs make you fat supposedly uh carbs don't make you fat <laughs> so we all know that carbs don't make you fat just like fat doesn't make you fat the macronutrient to say just that alone is going to make you fat, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's like saying you just eat a piece of bread, you're going to gain weight or gain fat. There's no way. There's no way. It's all about being in that huge caloric you know, surplus to actually gain that weight. And especially if you're not active, you can then start putting on fat, having that store as fat. But really, it's absurd. Yeah, hearing that, it's like, oh, my gosh. When people say carbs are the devil, carbs are the enemy, it's like, oh, my <laughs> Face palm. <laughs> Face palm. Face palm yeah. for sure. Yep. Now, and that's that's good news for me because I got to tell you, I love carbs. I like, do too. It's... I do too. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. People think they have to cut carbs, go keto, or just go on any fad diet in general that might be out there to, you know, see these results and lose that fat they want to, you know, lose and the results they want to see. But it couldn't be further from the truth. It couldn't be further from the truth. Thankfully. Because those are not very sustainable anyhow, no. any fat diets out there. 
No, they're not. It's funny. I was just talking to a coworker uh, yesterday about this because you know I'm trying at this point to do better with my nutrition and my workout nice. routines, trying to get better with that. And yep. uh, she asked me if I was on any kind of particular diet. I was like, no, I'm not really on any like particular diet, like keto or like Mediterranean, nothing like that. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to lessen the amount of like you know uh, sugars, alcohol, and carbs that I'm taking in you know i'm still taking in some carbs because i mean you need that for energy oh, to work out yeah. but um yeah it's super interesting that that came up and that we have this chat today um so that was a good myth to debunk the whole carb the whole carb thing yeah and, uh, and i wanted to me yeah and i wanted to ask you uh, along the lines of because you mentioned caloric deficit and yep. I was I was thinking about that as I was preparing for this episode. It's like, hmm, caloric deficit. Okay, so let's think about in terms of absolute because I that's the easiest thing for humans to do is think in black and white, A B, right? So you let's just say you you're allowing yourself fifteen hundred uh, calories per day, and that's where you need to be in order to lose weight that you want, right? So you could have two, let's just say two Snickers bars, right? And then you've got all your calories for the day and you're good, right? Like that still counts. You'll be in caloric deficit and you'll be good, right? That's crazy, isn't it? Isn't that crazy that people actually say that? So the reality is, yeah, when it comes to this is, yes, you do want to be in that deficit to so actually lose that weight, burn that fat. Obviously, that standard, that's, that's key to begin with. But let's not kid ourselves now. We can't just be having any calories to add up to that if they're not you know nutritious enough if they're not dense enough have protein because that protein i'll just start with that protein is the most important macronutrient out of the three i'm not saying obviously fats healthy fats carbs especially the complex carbs are all very important as well let's not uh you know underestimate those but protein is the very most important thing to have no matter your fitness goals because if you're not getting enough protein in, you're going to be more apt to overeat your muscle maintenance. And if you're trying to gain muscle, it's going to be a lot harder <laughs> to maintain and gain that muscle, especially if you're already in a deficit, you're going to be more apt to lose muscle anyway. So if you're not getting enough protein to sustain your hunger, sustain your muscle uh, tissue, it's going to be a lot easier for it to diminish and for those muscles to be, you know, um, ate up essentially and mm. really start shrinking some, especially over time. So really making sure you're taking care of a well-balanced throughout healthy nutrition, prioritizing higher protein than not. And I would say minimum, a moderate fat, you know, diet, I'm not saying any fat diets, but a moderate amount of fat in your nutrition. I just love to say nutrition more than diet. Uh, and yeah. then have carbs at least, you know, moderate. You could have a high carb, uh, more of a lower to a moderate fat, you know, amount, and you can alloc. So essentially, you can allocate the macros however you want. However, just always make sure, however you do that, make sure that your protein is high enough. And I would advocate at least 0.8 grams per pound of your body weight. You could do a gram if you're super active, you lift a lot of weight. That's fine. But always, no matter where you're at, minimum get 0.8 grams per pound of your body weight for best results with your body, with your physique, as far as taking in that protein. And then make sure you're not consuming a lot of sugars, you know, a lot of sodiums, a lot of salt. Make, your, uh, make sure that your fat content is more unsaturated fat, healthier fats like nuts, butters, uh, things of that nature. You can have regular butter too. That's fine in moderation. In fact, it's better than, you know, some other things you can cook with, but still make sure that your fat, you know, intake is at least moderate. And a good rule of thumb is at least 0.3 grams uh, divided by your uh, body weight. And then you get the number you divide it by nine. I know that was a little mathematical for some listeners, but essentially making sure your fat uh, intake, you know, of fats is not too low either because you need some fat to be healthy to function well and of course your carbs you need some level of carbs to have energy especially if you're trying to work out especially if you're super active so that's also very very important to keep in mind and i would advocate at least 
uh, you know, a moderate amount of carbs to, to function well. And so that's going to be great. Higher protein, moderate amount of carbs, and then about a moderate amount of fat, at least that making sure though, of course, your calories are in a deficit to lose weight, but still allocating your macros pro uh, properly. And that's what I love to do too for myself, but also my clients is not only focus on the overall calories, but I love to first focus on the macros or macronutrients with the proteins, the fats, and the carbs. Make sure they're all allocated decently and make sure, of course, my protein intake's high enough and sufficient enough so that way that it's more balanced. And then from there, I can calculate and make sure each macronutrient adds up just fine and just evenly enough to add up to my overall calories. Yep. A hundred percent. So uh, a couple more questions here, uh, cause we're getting short on time, but I definitely want to make sure we get to these. So you mentioned tracking your macros and, and having those allocated correctly. Do you, yep. do you utilize any kind of an app or anything like that for yourself or your clients to, to help track those? Yeah, that's a great question. So I usually, so for me personally, I'm very, uh, very old fashioned, actually. Don't get me wrong. I love tech. I love apps, software, and all that's very helpful, especially in this day and age, makes everything easier. But I always just use my uh, either pen and paper, but lately I've just been using my phone and a notepad, the notepad app on my phone, and I'll just track my calories and macros that way. So that's how I do mine. I sometimes have my clients do that as well to basically mimic how I've done it, or I do have them track it through uh, Eat This Much. And then of course, basing that off of their meal plan and then uh, using my fitness pal to actually really track their calories and macros. So that way I can see it too. It keeps them more accountable that way for sure. Mm. Excellent. Yep. And then talking about, um, you know, this whole idea of fat loss, there is, as I'm sure you're aware, there's a new fad that's going on and it's the miracle weight loss drugs and the uh, compound semaglutide. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. If do you think it's beneficial? Uh, have you researched it at all? Or what, what are your, what are you finding? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'll, uh, I'll be totally honest. I haven't heard too, too much on that uh, fad yet. Uh, just really heard it uh, just recently, but have not heard too much about it. I will say uh, just like any fad diet, though, for my personal experience and overall uh, professionalism, it's not the best thing to, to ever get on, no matter the fad diet, whether it's, I would say from what I've heard, I haven't heard a lot on this, but from what I have heard, the little I've heard on it, I wouldn't suggest it. And it really goes back to a lot of the other fad diets that have been existing for God knows how long, uh, for this, for the longest time, I would say these fad diets just in general across the board are not worth anyone's time. Anyone listening right now, it is not worth, uh, it's not worth your time. It's not worth your energy. And it's certainly not worth your money and focus and your health to waste all that time and energy on these fad diets, because all they're going to do, all they're going to do honestly for you is restrict you from eating this, uh, restrict you from drinking this or doing this. And it's just going to make you, lead more of a, you know, non-satisfying life, a more restricted life that's going to honestly feel more, I'm going to be really real, very robotic uh, and just very, very unsustainable by the end of the day. And you're just going to feel weird going out with friends and not, you know, not uh, grabbing that uh, piece of bread because you feel like you're going to throw yourself out of ketosis, which in keto you would, but still, all it comes down to, guys, is being in a caloric deficit. Let's keep it simple. Be in a deficit. Keep yourself, you know, consistent with your workouts. At least do three to four times a week. Uh, you don't have to go super heavy with your weight unless you're experienced and you're wanting to do that. Making sure your form's good, though, if you do. Uh, but starting light, starting light with your weight and having more of a high protein based nutrition and way of eating and way of living. And when you have more protein, but you're in a deficit, you're working out at least three to four times a week, whether it's at the gym or even from home, like we were saying, some full body calisthenic circuits, doing that, just five exercises, you know, back to back, 10, 15 minutes, three times a week, that'll do a lot of good, a lot of benefits right there. And then getting your sleep, getting your sleep. 
and reducing and limiting your stress. I mean, stress is going to happen. It's part of life, but limiting it, that's the key. That is the magic thing to do. And stress will, uh, will actually make it a lot easier for your body to hold on to you and gain fat because stress produces this hormone called cortisol. So making sure you limit your stress, limit that stress for sure, and get your rest. I <laughs> love how that rhymed. But make sure you get your rest to you. And getting that rest, that's when your body's really and truly actively burning that fat. So getting that those seven to eight hours of good quality sleep, I had to stress that one because the amount, the quantity is very important, but the quality is even more important. Just like if you have friends, the quantity, it's cool, but you really want to have the quality. So it's just like with your sleep and your sleep is your best friend. So make sure you do that. Make sure you do that. It's going to be amazing for your health and you're going to feel a lot more refreshed and you're just going to live a lot longer, a lot longer of a happier, healthier life for sure. Amen. Amen. So these right there, there you go, guys. We just laid it all out gave you some practical steps to start this process. If you're one of those super busy entrepreneurs, like I'm sure a lot of you are that watch this. So um, Roman, where can people go to find you, learn about you and, and get into your world? If they're like, this guy knows his stuff. I like him. I want to be yeah. trained by Roman. Where do we go? Definitely. So if you want to find out more about me, what I've done and all the people I've helped with their bodies and their transformations, all you got to do is go to my website at romanfisherofficial.com. From there, you can actually fill out a quick application and we can get in touch one on one. And I, I would love to help you out. Also, you can find me at my social media at Roman Fisher Official at Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube and LinkedIn. I'm sure you're on LinkedIn especially if you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely on LinkedIn. Exactly right. All right, guys. Well, all those links are going to be below. Uh, you know what to do. Share this show out with the people in your network. Fitness is so important. Everything that sh was shared here is important for people to know, understand, and integrate into their lives to be healthy, happier, and excel in that business you love so much. So share this show out, like it, subscribe, do all the things. Roman, it was an absolute honor having you here. Thank you so much. Definitely, definitely. Likewise. All right, guys. Well, again, you know what to do. And peace. I'll see you in the next one.